Well, it's interesting. People think Scotland is permanently wet, <laughs> but um, today we have a wonderful, wonderful dry, dry day. So many people, when they come to Scotland, they see these wonderful vistas and landscapes and often very barren hills. And this is what they think is the real Scottish Highlands. But the ecosystem of Scotland is a manicured landscape by human beings. So it's already been vastly destroyed. My name is Paul Lister, and I'm the custodian of the Allerdale Wilderness Reserve in the Scottish Highlands. The landscape 1,000 or 2,000 years ago would have been very different. It would have been a mosaic of trees and vegetation and lichens and, and all sorts of uh, 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 flora, and uh, in it, would have been all these large predators, I mean, wolves, bears, lynx, there would have been wild boar, there would have been some elk possibly, and it would have been a magical environment, something like a sort of a European jungle. The Romans called it like the sort of the great wood of Caledon, the original forest. It's a Caledonian pine tree, Scots pine. And that's what is missing here in Scotland is trees. We need trees and we're emitting so much carbon these days that without trees and, and vegetation, we're gonna head for a bit of a brick wall. And we're really proud to have planted over 800,000 trees now. Probably, I'd say 80% of all the trees we planted at Allerdale have been Scots pines. And the rest have been holly, rowan, and birch, alder, juniper, any number of species, all native. That'll probably be our 800,000th tree and one, <laughs> something like that. Gosh, midges. Midgey, midgey, midgey. Okay, so in the deer rut, you hear the stags, and they'll be bellowing and roaring at each other. Um, and it sounds something similar to this. Oh! Yeah, let's see what's there. Let's have a look, see what we can see. Where did you last see them, Innes? Um, probably about a week ago, Roy. Yeah. And near the nest. The high tops. Well, let's just have a scan and see what we can see. In Allerdale, right from the start with Paul, I've been very supportive of this big vision of restoring the kind of ecology of Scotland, restoring the forests most importantly, and then bringing back the animals that are lost. You need all these creatures to make a balance in the ecosystem. And as John Muir once said, when one tugs at a single living thing in nature, one finds it attached to the rest of the world. And we've been tugging pretty hard. 
A trophic cascade is a pyramid of creatures and at the very top you have the large predators and carnivores and then underneath you have the small insects. And if you start at the top of the pyramid and you take away the predators, the whole pyramid, this trophic cascade collapses and uh, what happens is, is that you have a, a total imbalance of species underneath. I think the trouble is today there's no wind and so they're much more likely just to be hunched up somewhere not moving. There's not enough small prey because it's no good having deer carrion to feed chicks. You've got to have, yeah, yeah. you know, catch rabbits and hare yeah. and grouse and ptarmigan. You know, when you look at those huge rocks, you can just imagine wolves living under there long ago. Yeah, yeah. But I don't think we're going to see the eagle this morning. Oops, let's go. I don't need to go out and work anymore to, to create wealth. I'd rather do something useful with the, with the money that we have as a family and put something back. For over two decades, I used to think I was a businessman and compete with how my father uh, was successful in, in that field. I had an epiphany about 15 years ago. My father became quite unwell. He was in hospital for three months and he has suffered a very severe stroke and that really led to my change in my life that I wanted to be part of the solution and not the problem. When you see someone so close, a parent, lying helplessly in a hospital bed and you'd come in the hospital every morning thinking is he going to still be alive and it sent me into a very dark place and I went away for um, a month to Arizona actually to, to find myself and to come out and and to, to take some time out. And when I came out of there, I had some very, some real clarity on life. And that's when I decided that I should try and find a space where I could rewild. they refer to me as Howling Mad, as a headline, the big bad wolf story. The fear of wolves, and to a lesser extent bears, come from fairy tale stories, and also maybe some dramatic films that are made. It's scary, it's wild, it's not to be dealt with. Wolves are in every country in Europe now, bar Benelux and Great Britain. And uh, they're never going to be able to get back here. There's a whole ocean between us and the continent. And therefore, we should firstly bring them back in a controlled area. There wouldn't be what we call a biological problem. The problem with all this, these ideas is solely social and political. It's nothing to do with ecology. Everybody in the Strath runs sheep. It's sometimes a lot, sometimes a few. It's an important part of the economy. Of course, I would be worried about my animals. It would be such an easy target for, for wolves. In his ideal world, he would like to be able to take a group of st estates and join them together to create an area capable of handling population of, of wolves and maybe lynx and, and, and other things as well. There's never been a specific proposal and how could there be a specific proposal because there isn't a plan. Uh, there's just a, a you know, there's just a crazy idea.
people fought for many, many years to get the law changed so that everyone had the right to walk and access wild land across Scotland. And I think it's absurd to think that one landowner can stand up and say, well, I'd like to do it differently because of my particular pet project. This vision needs to be taken away from being a vision for Paul Lister and Allerdale. It needs to be a vision for Scotland. And it requires rules and beer. My passion for this has now got to be, got to be converted into a proper built strategy. And uh, I think it's important to have business people like yourselves and strategists and managers to actually now put the icing on the cake mm. and to try and make it happen. Mm. Well, let's get outside. Let's go down Glen Annadale. I want to show you some of the old woods we've got here. Excellent. Which are amazing. That would be good. Let's go and do that. So, Paul, this is um, probably one of my favourite spots on the reserve. Can you imagine what it's going to look like in 50 or 100 years' time? I, I think it's nearly impossible to imagine that, because yeah. I think we're so used to that uniform blanket planting of the Forestry Commission, but this is going to be fantastic. If every insect in the world died today, in 50 years, nothing would be living on planet Earth. If uh, every human being in the world died today, in 50 years, um, everything would be flourishing. So to me, that shows just how much of an impact we have on this planet. And uh, I really think that we should treasure those places that are still left, that are wild and not populated, and give nature a chance to come back. <laughs>